Hi, I'm Christina Casper Denman. I'm Linda Casper. And we're here today to talk a little bit about mom's latest book. It's uh, a memoir of land that he wasn't able to do, um, made up of his letters and letters to him. So where did you find these letters? Right after Len passed, I tried to put the uh, thing, organize things in his office, on his desk. And in one of the boxes there, I found uh, some pictures, one of which I had not seen, which is on the cover of this book. And letters to him, tightly folded, and I thought that would be the memoir that he was not able to write. So why do you think he didn't do his own memoirs? I think he was busy. He was still teaching after retirement. And uh, maybe he didn't want to do it. Or he had postponed it for some other time. Was there a process that you used in order to say, yes, this letter, not this letter? No, I put all the letters in chronological order as much as I could. And uh, the letters just develop Len's story, because especially those that he wrote, and uh, some of them like the letters from writers and authors uh, showed uh, his interest, you know, in literature, especially Philippine literature. What was the hardest part about typing out all of these letters? It was remembering Glenn long ago, which uh, had been kind of uh, disrupted by the later years, which I remembered, of course, especially the long years of hospice care at home. And uh, it was sort of like, sort of like uh, remembering different lands, you know, the young ones that I had forgotten and the later ones, which I remembered so sadly, in a way. In a sense, it's not just his memoir, but it's yours. And it's, it's a history of your relationship and your friendships with other people's. Yes, uh -huh. it's uh, all the things, the events, the people who created Len's life, you know, made it what it was. And uh, and I think in that sense, it was kind of confusing for me because my memories had to be kind of organized again, starting from the beginning and as it towards the end. And uh, it was hard, but I felt I had to do it. I couldn't just throw the letters away and uh, and maybe this is how Len planned, planned it, you know, let Linda do it. I don't know. It's even now trying to look for typos and things like that. I find it hard to read through the book. And uh, I hope it's uh, it's as good as Len. I don't think it would be as good as Len would have written it because uh, one of the reviewers uh, said that his work was erudite and literary, but I don't think this book is. It's just letters and my explanation of how it started. In a sense, this is less about his literary life and more about dad is a human being. Yes, it is. Although there are parts of 
I added the reviews of his books to, to show the effect he had. <clears throat> and I was so, so sad and so happy that so many responded to the news of his passing that Cecilia Brainard had put on her Facebook. I didn't realize, you know, that there were so many young writers who knew him only through his books. And one of them said, she knew Philippine literature through Lenz writings. He was always uh, reading, writing, but also enjoying life. He liked to plant, he liked to mow the grass, he liked to... Well, as much as anyone likes to mow the grass. Well, he had to. He, uh, and he planted a lot of uh, shrubs in the back, butterfly bushes to encourage butterflies and uh, yuccas, which were pretty white flowers on the tall stems. And uh, friends who knew he liked to plant would give him uh, cuttings from his garden. In fact, one asked, do you want a, a tree, Len? And Len said, I have enough already. But uh, he planted the hedges, he planted the bushes, and uh, I think he enjoyed it too. I think if he were still with us, what he would like to do is to take a copy of the book and go down to the river and sit with it and remember. He spent a lot of time remembering by the river. Yeah, he liked to go back to Wisconsin and visit his family. He's, he had four sisters and three brothers and his parents in their old house, you know. And he would visit his high school teachers and they would take him out, you know, went to the Dells, went to Baraboo, which was the first... Uh, circus in the States, I think. Beautiful uh, churches. I think he never forgot his roots. He was proud of having lived through the depression, which was kind of hard, but uh, his mother, Caroline Ader, did a wonderful job, you know. They didn't feel they were poor, although it was everybody else was poor, Len said. Well, I'm glad you were able to find those letters and transcribe them for us that we could learn a little bit more about him as well. Yeah, I, I hope he likes it.